What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This morning we've travelled up to Kings Lynn in Norfolk to visit Anglia Car Auctions classic car sale. It's over the whole weekend and there's 300 lots going under the hammer. So let's have a little walk around and see what bargains we can find. The car we're going to kick off with is this 1991 Rover Metro Clubman. You might think it looks in pristine condition and that is because it's covered just 17,000 miles. As I show you guys around the interior, you can tell that there's hardly any blemishes or imperfections. And that's because this Rover Metro used to be in the Land Rover Heritage Museum. The Metro also has its removable sunroof, so that whole glass panel comes out. After the Metro came out of the museum, it had a recommission and it's just completed a trip from Devon to London without skipping a beat. Here's a glance into the engine bay and the 1.3 engine looks in presentable condition. And the Metro also has MOT until June 2024. Overall, the condition of the Metro is brilliant and there is no reserve on this. So let's find out what that makes when it goes under the hammer. Moving from one no reserve classic to another, here we have a 1977 2 litre Capri. Honestly, I think I'm seeing double. So not only is this an automatic like the Metro, but it's also showing just 17,000 miles, which is believed to be genuine, but they can't guarantee it. It's also still got one of its original tax discs in the window. The reason for the such low mileage on the Capri is because it's been garaged for 31 years. I don't think it's a garage find, but I just think it's rarely been used. I've just lifted the bonnet to reveal the two litre Pinto engine. As you can see around the strut tops, it hasn't been welded, which the classic Fords usually have, and it's still showing its VIN number. Some people love them, some people hate them. It's also got its vinyl roof and sort of vinyl sunroof as well. As I say, so no reserve, so let's find out what that goes for. Moving from one classic Ford to another, I'm just inside of a 1985 Ford Orion. Now this one has covered 36,000 miles and that is believed to be genuine. I love it when you still see dealer stickers in the rear windows. Here we have the 1.6 diesel engine. I can only assume that'll be really sluggish. This was before they started putting turbos on diesel engines. Just having a glance around the engine bay, it looks like it's had some paint here and there, slightly scabby but overall condition isn't too bad. As I've just been talking about the engine bay being slightly scabby, I can't say the same for the exterior. It is absolutely mint. The Ford Orion is a no reserve, so let's find out what that goes for. Check this out, a 1989 MG Maestro Turbo. I think it's fair to say these seats have definitely had some use. Now there was only 505 MG Maestro turbos produced for the UK and this is number 203. It's a shame really, the interior doesn't look that bad but the headlining has uh, gone missing. I've just opened the bonnet and the engine looks nice and fresh. I think it's been recently painted. This is the two litre MG turbo engine. It's quite funny really, I know we're at auction and you shouldn't really charge auction cars but look, it's just bolts lying about. <laughs> but apparently it does have MOT. The Maestro Turbo has covered 97,000 miles. I think it still needs a little bit of recommissioning. It has been stored for quite a while but it is on the roads and the estimate today is eight to 10,000 pounds. We've all been drawn over to this 1998 Fiat Coupe 20 valve turbo. We've just opened the bonnet, don't know if you can call it that, it's half of the front end that's just lifted up. But it's revealed this 20 valve turbo engine, all the bells and whistles put on it, it's had some new hoses and it's been tinkered around with. 
it definitely looks the part. See, this is what I love with the auctions. You can just check out all different cars that you would never usually look at. Look at the sporty thing continuing. I think this is a wicked car. It's covered 110,000 miles. This is also what I love to see. Obviously, an enthusiast has owned this. It's got loads of little trophies and that. People's Choice 2009, Best Engine Bay. The Fiat has also got MOT until February 2024. But there is one unfortunate bit I've just read. It was a Cat D insurance loss in 2010. Anyway, I think that is a really cool future classic and definitely a rare car, seeing as there's only 20 still on the road in the UK. With an estimate of five to six thousand pounds, let's see what that goes for. I've just popped into the interior of this 1995 Mark III Ford Fiesta. I've got to say, I love the retro patterns on these. Just, yeah, back in the day, they just made everything look so much better than just the boring interiors that you get in cars these days. It's a sunroof model and there's no rust around it, which is surprising. I've just been reading up about this Mark III Fiesta. It had just one lady owner up until November 2022. So I think it's been looked after because I haven't found too many imperfections yet. I've just come onto the driver's side and the mileage is reading just 11,000 miles. Dad and Lauren are over there checking out the MOT history to make sure that isn't 111,000. It seems to be a very low mileage, one lady owner car. When was the last time you saw a coolant tank in an old Ford that weren't all horrible and orange? That looks brand new, that does. Here's the 1.3 engine in the old Fiesta with its five-speed gearbox. The little Mark III Fiesta has MOT until November of this year, and it is entered as a no reserve car today. So let's find out what that goes for. What do we have here? This is a 2000 Ford Escort 55 van. If you've watched my previous Anglia car auction video from the other month, I bid it on one of these, but it went for well over five grand in the end. Just looking in the back of the Escort van, it's not a Minter. It's definitely had a few patches where it's been repaired before. The Escort van has been in the same ownership since 2012, and it looks reasonably straight. I mean, I'm not going to say there's no dings in the rear panels, but there's definitely not a lot. Anyway, here today at Anglia Car Auctions, the Escort van is estimated two to two and a half thousand pounds. Moving on to the next car, this is a 1980 Volvo 345 DL. Here is its 1.4 rear wheel drive engine. Dad was just informing me that the spare wheel is actually meant to sit here, but obviously that is missing. I'll tell you what, there's a funky old smell inside here. <laughs> it's showing just 39,000 miles. This Volvo's actually been used in quite a few film sets and documentaries and whatever, but it hasn't had MOT since 2005. I think it's fair to say that the bodywork is going to need quite a bit of TLC and it's going to need a good old restoration to get it back on the road. Anyway, today it's entered as a no reserve, so let's find out what that goes for. How about this for a find then? A 1983 Ford Sierra XR4i. The vendors described this XR4i as a good, genuine car that is solid underneath, but just doesn't get used anymore. The headlines all droop down. I think that's seen better days. The interior isn't too bad. As the description states, it could do with some light restoration in here, but overall, the interior isn't too bad. Here is the 2.8 litre engine, which is described to be running well. The only thing that's really letting down this Sierra is the bodywork. 
really naughty patch there. And as you can see, the roof has had a hard life as well. I've just lifted the carpet up in the boot to see what the condition's like. I'm actually really surprised. It's uh, yeah, very clean and it also comes with a spare wheel. It's definitely a project for someone, but I don't think it's too far gone. The estimate on it is eight to 10,000 pounds. Well, 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 what do we have here? This name has been mentioned on my channel loads of times before, way before I attended auctions. This is SB Parts, Shane Baker. He supplies lots of parts for Mark II and Mark I Fiestas. So we are looking around this 1988 Mark II XR2 Fiesta, and it's got a surprise under the bonnet. It's fitted with a upgraded two litre blacktop engine, which is running 130 brake horsepower. Now I am very honest in these videos, I just point out what I see. Down here is really rotten, that's gonna need some attention. And also here on the other side, that's gonna need some welding down there, very close to this strut tower. So I won't be passing an MOT, or you'd have to have a very nice MOT to get that through. Inside we have all of the XR2 features, including the seats, the door cards, the steering wheel, all upgrades from the standard Fiestas. It's got its original pepper pot wheels, which have been painted black. Overall, the Mark II Fiesta XR2 isn't in bad condition, starting to go on the top of the sunroof and just a tiniest bit on the scuttle as well, but it does have MOT until May 2024. And the estimate on the XR2 is three and a half to four and a half thousand pounds. Although this 1985 Ford Capri Laser is offered as a runner, it definitely needs some TLC. Just look at that wing. As we take a look around the engine bay, you can see all of the back there starting to go very rusty. And all along this wing as well, progressively gets worse towards the end. We won't prod around in there too much. It still does have its original two litre Pinto engine. Dad has just noticed as well that the front panel has had a good old whack in the middle, separated from the wing on this side. Unfortunately, I've got to report that the interior isn't much cleaner than the outside. Yes, um, really not the best condition in here. Got a local Ford dealership Norfolk sticker in the rear window and also got some Norwich plates on it. Today, the two litre laser Capri is offered as a no reserve. We've now come across this 1990 VW Caddy with its own special feature. The special feature is it's got its own paddling pole. Well, I don't think that's a feature you'd want on a classic car. I'll just show you around the cab. It looks in reasonable condition. It doesn't look too bad compared to the bodywork of this vehicle. I haven't had to go far and you can already see some bodge that's been done to this passenger front door. It's also all starting to bubble along the scuttle area. Someone's painted it. As you can see, it's been done quite crudely. And as you can see on this front wing, the arch is really starting to bubble up. We've just lifted the bonnet to reveal the 1.6 diesel engine. The GoPro probably doesn't pick it up because it's quite bright. The sun's come out now, but all along the top here is all rotten and bubbling away. And as for the bed, it's in a rough old condition. As you can see, the wheel tubs there have been bashed about a lot and not only does it have water actually sitting on the bed it's also got daylight holes showing through overall the caddy pickup isn't in the best condition but anything can be restored it's got an estimate of three to four thousand pounds Oh, 
Well, here's a bit of a different Capri. This is a 1976 Capri 3-litre gear with a Tickford body kit on it. The interior is actually in great condition. Here's just a rear shot of the Capri. I bet that sounds lovely with a 3-litre and the twin exhaust coming out of the back. I've just been reading that the Capri had a restoration around 2002 and it took them several years to complete. Here is the SX V6 engine. Now I've got to say, it's a really presentable engine bay. There's a bit of excess coolant on there. Not sure what's happened, but yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all. It's believed that it's 101,000 miles that this Capri has covered. Anyway, the estimate on the unique Capri 3 litre gear is eight to 10,000 pounds. We've just stumbled across another VW Caddy. This one was built in 1999, and what a year that was. This one is in much better condition than the other one. Now this one has its own paddling pool as well, but it's actually protected somewhat because it does have this lovely fitted cover to the back. And unfortunately, I've just been reading that the Caddy isn't on the roads. The MOT ran out in 2022. We've just opened the bonnet to reveal the 1.9 diesel engine. It's got previous signs of welding, but it's all been sorted out. It looks nice and neat as well. Just needs a bit of body color put over the top. Yeah, overall, it's not in bad condition. The estimate on the Caddy pickup is two and a half to three and a half. How's this for a classic engine bay? This is a 1966 Ford Anglia 105E. It's got its 1.6 crossflow engine. It also features some twin 40 Webbers on the side of it. Very nice. As you can see straight away, the Anglia has had some different arches put on it. And it also features these JBW 7J wired wheels. How aggressive does that look from the rear? Doesn't look like a Harry Potter car anymore, does it? It's got some Millington coilovers on the front. It's got some gas shock absorbers at the rear, as well as loads of other modifications and upgrades. There's 85,000 miles on the clock on this Anglia, and the estimate is eight to 10,000 pounds. Here we have a 1986 Vauxhall Cavalier 1.8. As we take a look inside of the Cavalier convertible, you can see that the seat bolster has had some wear on the side there, like most of them. The clocks are showing just 50,000 miles. As I say, we don't know whether that's genuine or not. So you have to look back on old MOTs to try and gauge whether that is or not. In 1985, a company called Hammond and Thide started to convert these Cavaliers into convertibles and they've done so up to 1988. In the bay we've got Vauxhall's 1.8 injection engine and looking around the engine bay it's not in bad condition there's some surface rust that probably needs dealing with but a good rub down and some paint would make this look brand new again. One thing I really do like on the rear of this Cavalier is the way the lights sort of carry on all along the rear panel. I think that's a reflector, but yeah, I really like that. Proper 80s vibes. Unfortunately, the Vauxhall Cavalier is out of MOT. It ran out in 2021, but having a brief look over it, it doesn't look in bad condition. Hopefully someone can get that back on the road. It's offered today as a no reserve. Next up, we've come across this 2001 Ford Puma. These have got the 1.7 engine in them that quite a lot of people take out of them and put in other classic Fords. I've got to say, just from the first glance, it's remarkably clean in here. 
and the Puma has covered just 90,000 miles since 2001. Just looking under the bonnet as well, this is in remarkably good condition. There's the 1.7 ZTEC engine that I was talking about. Dad's just lifted up the rear carpet and just look how clean that is. Someone's really looked after this. As you can see, factory seal. I doubt that's been rear-ended. And as we all know, the old Fords attract rust on the rear arches, but this one is absolutely mint. Someone must have really looked after this and garaged it. Anyway, I'm impressed with the condition of the Puma and it's offered today here at Anglia Car Auctions as a no reserve. Here we have a 1997 Volvo V70R. It's a all-wheel drive model. Five cylinder, 2.4 liter engine. It's massive and I bet it goes like stink. I'm not too sure on the brake horsepower, so if anyone knows, please whack it in the comment section below. Now this is actually a seven seater. I assume there's two seats in the boot that flip up. The condition of the seats are slightly worn and it's covered a total of 130,000 miles. But it's not in bad condition. i just say it's been used. Still got stuff like the original stickers down here, which is nice to see. All the alloys are in great condition, and it is always good to see that it's got a set of matching all four tires. We're just in the boot, and we were wondering where the seats were, but as you can see, this forms part of the two rear seats. As you can see, me and Dad have just kind of put the rear seat contraptions together but yeah they face the other way and sit something like that the vendor describes a volvo to be running free from any issues and it drove 50 miles to the auction just look at them two rear exhausts now that is one very cool estate and the volvo v70r is estimated six to eight thousand pounds Here we have a 1992 Volvo 940 SE Turbo. Big old long roof. Check that out. It's also got its standard headlight wipers and washers on it still. Dad's just lifted the bonnet to reveal the two litre engine with its turbo tucked down there. I've got to say, this is in really good condition. There's no signs of rust at all on it and yeah, I do actually really like this. The Volvo has covered 168,000 miles and the reason that we're looking around a few Volvos today might be because Dad first worked on these when he left school, worked in a Volvo garage. So when I look in BMWs, I check out the original toolkits and this Volvo has its original toolkit. It's a proper barge though. It is, oh, I don't even know how long this is. Three, four meters. As we look down the side of the Volvo, you can just tell what great condition the body works in. The description states that it's been in the same family since new. Anyway, the Volvo 940 SE is entered as a no reserve. So let's find out what that goes for. Well, you more commonly see these old Granadas on the banger track these days. This is a 1982 2.8 GL. I really do love the classic interiors. Look how much green is on the go. The dash is green, the carpet is green, door cards are green, seats are green. They just went full in when designing this. The clocks are showing 75,000 miles. We just lifted the bonnet up to reveal the 2.8 V6 engine. 
as you can tell, it doesn't look like it's been used for a while. But it's said that it does start and drive, but it's got some sticky brakes as it has been locked up in a garage for several years. Unfortunately, the Granada doesn't have a spare wheel, but look at these panels. They are in real good condition, and so is the boot and the rest of the interior. Overall, the Granada is in really good condition. There's hardly no visible rust on the surface and the body panels. Although it doesn't need MOT and tax, it hasn't been registered as a historic vehicle yet, so you'd need to let DVLA know. And the estimate on the Granada 2.8 is six to eight thousand pounds. found this very nice Mini, it's a 1978 Leyland Mini 1275. We've just opened the bonnet to reveal the 1275 engine. It's had loads of nice touches and goodies put on it, including a stage three cylinder head. As you can see, the interior also features a roll cage and these like retro bucket seats. A very nice wooden steering wheel as well to go with all of the wooden dash. The Mini's got MOT until August 2024 and the estimate is six to eight thousand pounds. So not only can you buy mint minis here at Anglia Car Auctions, but you can get some projects. This is a 1974 Morris Mini 1275 GT and I think it's missing a few parts but what it does have is the original VIN and the V5. As you can see both of these front floor pans are completely knackered you can see daylight all the way through there and yeah just overall it needs one big restoration. As you can see there's actually a couple of blobs of previous welding that have survived but this is honestly pretty far gone the subframe is really rotten as well although it's not here for us to see the mini does come with its original 11 stud engine and gearbox unit and the estimate on the 1275 gt is two thousand to two and a half thousand pounds We've just stumbled across this 1972 Honda Z600 city car. This is a proper quirky thing. Now I'm not even that tall, but I feel like I'm dwarfing this tiny little car. I can't say I've looked around one of these before. It's gonna be quite interesting. Well, someone's nicked the radio and the carpet has definitely seen better days. <laughs> it is literally tiny. Now the Z600 hasn't got any information about the MOT back to 2005. And as you can see, the floor's rotten. This door, <laughs> it's got a big old hole in it, along with the driver's seal. So it's gonna need a lot of work. Just when I didn't think this car could get any more quirky, this looks like the rear boot. Or oh, actually, no, I think that's where the spare wheel sits something like that and I think this is the boot but it's not open. I've just opened the bonnet finally and it's revealed the 598cc engine all in there and complete and it's said that it's running and driving. Now it's fair to say the Honda Z600 needs a lot of work but I was really surprised with the estimate seeing as it's such a rare car it still holds good money with an estimate of four to six thousand pounds. Here we have a 1993 BMW E30, it's a 318i Touring. The E30 Touring has been stored since 2011 and is sold as a non-runner. It's showing 130,000 on the clocks. I'm not 100% sure, but I think these could be the BBS wheels. I absolutely love the style of these. Here is the 1.8 injection engine. And the engine bay doesn't look too bad. It's missing the battery, but overall condition isn't the worst under here. The last MOT on the BMW was back in 2011, so over 10 years ago, and it's gonna need some restoration work on it. But it's offered as a no reserve, so let's see what that goes for. 
We've now come across this 1980 Cortina 1.6 GL, recently been in storage but it has been restored at the earlier part of this year. The Cortina has been resprayed in its original colour of solar gold, but to their knowledge, the Cortina hasn't been welded. I've got to say though, even the vinyl roof is in great condition. It's a little bit dark in this section of the auction, but you can still see the brown interior. It's covered 49,000 miles, but I'm not too sure if that's warranted or not. Just checking out the condition of the engine bay. It looks really good and there's no visible signs of rust. Motocraft battery on it. And there is the 1.6 Pinto engine. The Cortina still has the original stills and it's also got four matching Firestone tires. The Cortina's only had three former keepers and it's got MOT until March 2024. Anyway, the estimate on the Mark V Cortina is five to seven thousand pounds. Now this is proper cool, a 1979 Austin Mini Clubman. Had a brief look around this off camera and I'm loving them seats. The overall condition of the bodywork is very nice. As you can see, it's finished in this orangey red color. Rear doors look nice and solid as well, which is always good to see. The description states, it's now got a 1310cc engine. There's lots of upgrades inside the engine, included upgraded rockers, billet flywheel, straight cut drop gears, and a close ratio gearbox. It now generates 88 brake horsepower. Just reading the description, and it also has 1994 Ford Fiesta front brake discs and calipers, which is interesting. It's had a bit of time spent on it and a few modifications done. Anyway, the estimate on the Clubman is nine to 10,000 pounds. I'm now looking around a 1994 Toyota Hilux 4x4. I am trying to spread my wings, but a subscriber actually got in contact with me and asked me to look around this. And of course, I will look around this. And here it is, all jacked up. It's been in the same ownership since 2001. The description states that the chassis has been fully rust proofed. It's had a good once over and they didn't find any corrosion. And also, whilst they were rust proofing the underside, they also gave the bodywork a full respray. And as for these graphics, they're the same as the factory ones. They've been remade and then put onto the fresh paintwork. I think it looks great. The Hilux is showing 107,000 miles, which is believed to be genuine and supported by its history file. I've just opened the bonnet and here is the 2.4 diesel engine. Under here hasn't been tarted up at all. It just is what it is. You can clearly tell someone's really looked after this and restored it properly. It's got MOT until December 2023 and the estimate is 10 to 12 thousand pounds. Here we have a convertible contraption with Looking around, a 1968 Ford Corsair Crayford convertible. Look at that, proper classic Corsair with a wooden dash and the big steering wheel. I'm loving the classic wire wheels with the small white wall on the tire. Now Crayford, who were based in Kent, converted around 100 of these Corsairs. So they're very rare now. I couldn't help but notice when I was reading the description that it's got a Watford and District Classic Vehicle Club sticker. It's very local to me. As I've just lifted the bonnet, it's revealed the two litre V4 engine these came with. As you can see, there's a slight bit of corrosion starting around the strut tops 
but no signs of previous repairs. I think this is a good, genuine example. The Corsair Crayford convertible has got MOT until July 2024, and the estimate is 10 to 12 thousand pounds. Here we have a 1989 Vauxhall Nova GTE, very common hot hatch back in the day, but very rare to see on the UK roads now. The Nova is described to be a very genuine example and completely unmolested, still featuring its brilliant original seats with the 80s stripes going down them, matching the exterior colour bodywork. As you can see, the bodywork is in great condition. There's no blemishes or marks, no signs of any rust. And that may be because it's only covered just 28,000 miles, which is believed to be genuine. Just look how clean that boot is. Comes with its original spare wheel. Look at that, it's genuinely so, so clean. As I've just opened the bonnet to reveal the nippy 1.6 injection engine that Vauxhall produced for these. It's in reasonable condition under here. Could do with some tidying up and a few bits and bobs. But the Nova is on the road and MOT'd until April 2024. Anyway, I think that's one of the cleanest Novas I've seen in a while. It was subject to a Cat D insurance loss in the past, but it was just to the offside front wing. And the estimate today is 10 to 12 thousand pounds. Next up, we're looking at this 1989 Austin Mini Mayfair, which is on the road, and it's got MOT until July 2024. The Mini Mayfair model was in production from 1982 to 1994 as a more luxurious version of the basic Mini. The interior of this Mini looks really nice, and it is described to be a clean example, showing 14,000 miles. They believe that is genuine mileage. I've just lifted the bonnet to reveal the mint engine bay. Look how clean this is. Very original. Still got its 998cc engine in there. That's a really good and presentable Mini. And for just the estimate of five to seven thousand pounds, I think someone will be picking up a gem today. Now this isn't any transit, this is a 1989 Ford Transit County 4x4. There was a few companies that offered to convert these transits into 4x4s and this one was done by County Tractors of Knighton. I'm honestly shocked when I jump into a classic like this. I know some of you may say this isn't a classic, but in my eyes it is. And just look, look at the door shuts, look how clean they are. And even these steps on the old transits, everyone will know they normally rust out. But look at the plates, they look brand new. The plastic steps still in there, even this plastic bit of trim. It's just mint. The transit is showing 80,000 miles and it's previously had four keepers. Now there's a really interesting story with this van. It's been all over the world. The bloke who bought it in 1989 repaired and made props and models for film companies. It even states in the ashtray here, there's a couple of rocks towards the back. They are actually from the Berlin Wall. It even says in the description that whilst the van was in Tunisia, it has C3PO from Star Wars in the back undergoing repairs. Now, I'm not a Star Wars fan, but some of you guys might be. I think it's fair to say the transit has definitely been recommissioned. This, I look at it now, it's in great condition and what a story to go with it. As you can see, under all the arches are in great condition as well. I don't think there's one floor I could pick out this van. And it's on the road. It's got MOT until September 2023. I've just lifted the bonnet and no surprise here, it's absolutely mint as well. 
oh, just look at it. It's been really well maintained or restored. <laughs> and there is the two litre Pinto engine, the original engine it came with. It's also got these like ball bars on the front. Proper aggressive look. Anyway, definitely a one-off. And the estimate is 12 to 14 thousand pounds. Now here we have a complete one-off. It's a 1962 Ford Anglia 105E. It's got one family owner from new. The Anglia was purchased new by the vendor's grandfather in Chester for £691. The car hasn't been running for the past 20 years and I don't think it starts, but what a find, honestly. All the paintwork still looks in great condition. Look at that. I think it's been stored in the garage because not even the arches are rusty. It will need some recommissioning, don't get me wrong, but it's a great start for someone for a project. And as you can see, the Anglia is behind this cordon. I'm sure we could go and have a look if we want, but I'm not going to. It's offered today as a no reserve, so I'm really, really interested to see what that goes for. In these classic car auction videos, people always ask me to show the bikes. So I'm just gonna give you a brief walk around the bikes. I don't know too much about them, but they're all here for you guys to see. And you can visit Anglia Car Auctions website to see how much they all sold for. There we have it, that rounds off a weekend spent up at Anglia Car Auctions attending their classic car sale and what a weekend it was. I just want to run through a couple of lots with you guys. The first one is the Anglia 105E. It had all of them upgrades and modifications to the suspension and the engine. It ended up selling for 77, which I thought was a real good price and someone got uh, a lot for their money there. Another lot that I wanted to touch on was the Ford Puma. It was sitting at £700 and I couldn't let it go for that, so I thought I'd have a cheeky bid, but it went up to £900. I mean, all in all, I think it sold for a grand, which is nothing. I was interested in it, but it didn't have MOT, so it'd mean I'd have to trailer at home. But yeah, not to worry. Do I regret not filling it up? Maybe, but there will always be another one. The last lot I just wanted to talk about was a Volvo 940 SE. I was looking around that, I thought it was an absolute bargain. A massive barge, a lot of car for your money, and you can get so much in the boot. A classic car, under two grand, I think that was a really good buy for someone. The fees up at Anglia Car Auctions are just 8% plus VAT on the fees. What I usually do is I'll show the hammer price and then I'll show the sold for price. Now the sold for price is with the fees included. But as you would have seen, there was over 300 classic cars going through the auction over the weekend. And yeah, I was just recording as many as I could. But if you'd like to go and experience it for yourself, it's free entry. And the next classic car sale is the 4th and 5th of November. It's a whole weekend sale once again. And I'll leave their website link in the description below so you guys can start to see what lots they've got coming up for that sale. Anyway, we really enjoyed our weekend spent up at Anglia Car Auctions once again. All the staff are really friendly and welcoming, so it's really hard to keep your hand in your pocket. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like, and if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, I'll see you guys later.